The three men have been tasked to call pretty much every Canucks game since the inception of the team in 1970. Hall of Famer, Jim Robson, Jim Hewson, and uh, John Shorthouse as well. I don't know what I'm doing here, but... <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just want to start at the start, uh, Jim, and the pride you took of this inaugural season in 1970 of being the first guy to bring Canucks games to the public. It was a thrill to be on Hockey Night in Canada opening night. All my relatives, I hope, were proud because it was an exciting time. You guys worked closely, Jim, in 82, I believe, when you did the, the run of the cup final on radio when yeah. and this drops was on TV. People might remember when I came back to Vancouver in the 90s, um, what they might not know is that I'd been here before. Uh, I did my first radio game, first National Hockey League game in about 1979. When I started filling in, I worked at CKNW. I was hired from Brandon, Manitoba by Al Davidson to move to Vancouver. And I got to Vancouver and realized I'd never asked him how much money I was going to make. <laughs> <laughs> but I was coming to Vancouver. You were underpaid. <laughs> you know, uh, so um, I knew what the job entailed. And I so up until 1982, I stayed in Vancouver and I was content to, to be Jim's understudy and to do radio games when he was doing television. And I really got the bug in 82 when when they, they had this improbable run to play the Islanders in the Stanley Cup final. And Jim did a lot of TV, a lot of home TV. So I did the games on the radio and decided that uh, this was a job for me. I was going to be a play-by-play -play guy full-time, but it wasn't going to happen here <laughs> because Jim was going to keep doing it for a while, so I left. So when I came back in the 90s, I knew exactly what the job entailed. What was it like following in the footsteps of the two Jims? Uh, daunting, but yeah. uh, exciting, because, I mean, it's the only thing I ever wanted to do. Um, when the job first came open um, in 94, 95, when, when Jim stepped back to do a TV package, I was 24 with no play-by-play -play experience and uh, some TV experience at Global at Sports Page. So I sent a tape uh, of myself before my voice had changed. I was calling a Canucks game in the basement. I was about 10 or 12 years old, and knowing I probably wouldn't get it, but I wanted to let them know that I had a passion for this. And of course, you, you wound up getting the job in 94, 95. Um, but I think they remembered that. One thing that I don't think people around the National Hockey League realize is what a prestigious job radio hockey in Vancouver was. I always thought it was, and still is, the number one NHL radio market. Uh, first of all, because of the time difference. So in the early years, there were a lot of Eastern time zone games. And even to this day, uh, with the proliferation of television, to a lot of people, that you can't get home to watch the game on TV. It's a, it's a perfect radio market and drive time. And then Jim was so good at it that he turned it into, he, he put the second level of it being a very prestigious job. So when I came back here in 1994 to take the radio job, people looked at me and he said, you're gonna go leave television to go back to radio? And he said, you, you don't know the job that I'm going back to, I know it. And I bet that time you knew how much they were gonna pay you. <laughs> well, there was that too. <laughs>